Hello, <clears throat> it's been a while since it's been out. Uh, the objective of this trip is to get out beyond the heads, uh, spend the night offshore, hang off a drogue. Uh, I suspect I'm going to get horribly seasick and won't enjoy the experience at all, but um, you know, let's give it a go and we'll see how we go. At the moment the, uh, the tide is just on the turn and I'm heading downwind with a nice southwester behind me, just probably three or four knots and I'm doing about um, four knots over the ground so it shouldn't take me too long to get out to the heads. Well, the, uh, now I'm in the middle of the channel, the wind's picked up a bit, I'm doing about <coughs> perhaps <coughs> 4.2 to 4.4 knots perhaps, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah that's Purao Bay over there, which we're going to be leaving behind very, very shortly. And I've come from back there behind Quail Island. An interesting cloud formation up there where I've got a huge high sitting over New Zealand, uh, well, sitting over New Zealand and particularly Canterbury at the moment. So um, that means that the air is pushing down, which forms cloud conditions. So that's what that is, it's not really in front. The rig's just doing what the rig does. I'm totally used to using it now. And it's, well, it's just fine for me. I'll just give you a bit of a wake. The wind's picked up a bit now that I'm just getting to the heads, and so you can see I've scandalised the rig out here. And so I just, to do that, I just pull the sail down to the top and I roll it up and I secure it there at the base. bit of loose stuff that happens at the top there because I've used the halyard there to just raise the boom so that there's no chance of the boom hitting the cabin top if there's a jive. Oh, I could really do with some wind now. You can see that this ship is uh, getting fairly close now on my starboard bow and uh, the wind's dropped right away and I'm only doing about one and a half knots. So, obviously I don't want to end up sort of drifting into this ship, um, but yeah, I could just really do with some wind now, just so that I could pass it, you know, with a bit of certainty. Well, thankfully the, uh, the sou'wester picked up again. It's still fairly light, but at least I'm doing about three knots now, after being in a hole for a while. And so I can pass quite happily to the stern of the ship here. Um, so that's good. That's a good thing. I don't really like the relish the prospect of drifting onto that ship. But um, so they are obviously waiting to go into Little Harbour. And now that's sort of my. I was aiming towards that ship the entire time I left the heads, and now I'm pretty much. Uh, just, uh, I'm going to have to come up with a new new point to sail towards, which uh, I'm not sure whether the edge of Pegasus Bay is the go or whether I just need to start sailing on a compass heading. I have a feeling I might have to sail on a compass heading actually to make this thing work. But um, yeah, the good, good news is that I'm getting along again now at a reasonable clip. 
Well, it's definitely a case of uh, lazy days out here. I'm only doing about um, two knots if I'm lucky. And you can see there's that ship back there. You can see it's conditions are, while overcast, are really quite calm. Well, I've just passed the uh, halfway point to my destination. There's a trawler out there coming out to sea. So that's a good sign. I'm glad to see it's out there. So I don't think any of the ships follow my track. I think it's too close into the shore. Because uh, it feels to me as though a ship running me over is probably the biggest danger I've got out here. There's the Canterbury coastline of Pegasus Bay. So I'm probably, I'd estimate now, maybe six miles offshore, something like that. And uh, the wind direction has changed now, and now I'm on a, an easterly, which was predicted. And that's going to gradually increase for the remainder of the day up a bit at night and then tomorrow it will get a bit stronger again but that'll be good because I'll be coming back with it tomorrow so um, hopefully I have a fairly swift trip back into Littleton but I'm pretty much sailing on the you know I'm not quite not quite close haul but I'm getting that way and uh, gradually picking up speed. I think I'm doing a bit, a bit over two knots now. So, uh, yeah, it's it's still, the sea is still very smooth. There's a slight southerly swell, and now we've changed to a northeast or an easterly breeze. But I think, um, because the conditions have been light for quite a few days, um, it'll, it'll probably stay pretty calm. I don't know. Tomorrow, once it's been a northeaster blowing for a while, there might something might happen. We'll wait and see. Not sure if you can see these or not, but these are little blue penguins. They are a species endemic to New Zealand. They're a little, a little penguin, and um, there's quite a few that live around here on Banks Peninsula. And these guys are out here. Feeding, obviously. So that's pretty cool to see. Wow, I'm pretty crook. As soon as I stopped and put the drogue out over my waypoint, uh, 10 miles off the Wymac mouth, I got seasick. <coughs> And I've been seasick ever since. Uh, the drogue didn't slow me down as much as I would have liked. Uh, and so I've already drifted four nautical miles from my waypoint and it's just after midnight. So if I'd stuck with that strategy, I'd have ended up on the beach by the morning. So I just had to get up through the vomiting and uh, I've set up the rig scandalized and I've still got the drogue out and I'm now on a kind of a oh, I suppose, I'm not close hauled really I'm on some sort of beam reach and the drogue is still out, so uh, with the tiller locked, it just seems to be fine. It's just sitting there. So I'm heading back out to sea. Uh, 
towards my destination tomorrow, but still out to sea, making sure I'm getting well off that beach. So, hopefully I'll be a bit better by tomorrow, but uh, if not, I'm going to make it one way or another. Well, it's uh, six o'clock in the morning, and I've spent the night being seasick. So I've now worked out. Since I've been in this situation twice, but uh, seasickness for me lasts for around a minute, half a day, twelve, thirteen hours, something like that. I start to feel better, so I'm starting to feel better now. But uh, yeah. Yesterday, didn't sleep in a sleeping bag or anything, just lay in here feeling crook all night. So, pretty keen to just get back at, actually into, into the harbour and have a bit of a tidy up and uh, have some food, I guess. So, yeah, the experience has been wow. Let's put it this way, there's nothing wrong with the boat. The boat's as tough as anything, but I'm not as tough as the boat. And I think, um, yeah, offshore sailing's not for me, and that's what I needed to work out. So um, I will just continue doing lake sailing and um, small coastal hops, but um, yeah, spending hours and hours, days out at sea. No, I don't think it's I don't think it's what I want to be doing. So I needed to work that out, so it's good and I've done that. So it's a grey overcast day and uh, my drogue, which was a piece of garden hose um, through rope attached to the cleats on either side of the boat and the steer, had got twisted to glory when I pulled it in, twisted, it was, had kelp in it, it was really messed up, so um, not sure that it's quite as good a thing as it could be, oh I don't know, it, it did enable me to sail very slowly away from the coast during the night, um, if I'd been on a, on a parachute anchor I wouldn't have been able to do that, I'd have had to just sit on the anchor and hope that it worked, so Perhaps that combination of drag and still being able to sail was actually quite a good thing. Because uh, I was able to, once I realised that I was going to be sitting on a tack that I didn't need to monitor, um, I was able to actually sleep. So I slept, I don't know, I probably slept um, two snatches of sleep each of maybe a couple of hours. Are we going to get a green flash? doubt it but we're getting a beautiful sunrise just there just beneath the cloud very orange oh, I've had quite a bit of trouble getting to this point um, just back here off um, back out here just off Sumner Head and the wind kind of died and I was going backwards and forwards Backwards and forwards, uh, <coughs> opposite that ship out there, in about three or four tacks, but I think now I might be on a tack that's actually going to get me there, I'm pointing straight at Little Port Cooper ahead there, there's Adley head there, so if I can just get in towards Little Port Cooper and past this Godly head here. I'm pretty sure we're going to be good after that. There'll be a breeze blowing straight up the harbour. There's the wind before, it seemed to be sort of coming from pretty much straight out there, just, just kind of a southeast, which is quite wrong for me. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful this time we're going to do it. Well, it's a relief to at last be in the harbour and 
I've got a nice following breeze and I'd say it's all going to be good from here. Uh, there was no wind at the heads so I had to paddle around Godly Head which didn't impress me much but um, yeah I'd say it's just uh, going to be hopefully now just a straight shot home. Uh, warriors can I get to the retrieval point. The tide will have turned, uh, so that's the only concern is I might be fighting the tide right near the end just to get there. Well, the clouds have all gone and it's a nice sunny day. It's going to be quite a pleasant day I think.